We'll draw the Lewis structure for this. We'll do Vesper. We'll do polarity. Okay, valence. Start there. Very beginning. To do everything that you learned in chapter 10, you've got to draw the Lewis structure first. And to do a lot of what we're going to learn in chapter 11, you've got to do Lewis structure. So, valence equals uh, 7 from iodine plus 4 times 7 from chlorine plus one more because it has a minus charge. So that's 7 times 5 is 35, 36. Just from what I taught you before, the I has to be in the middle. Uh, whenever you see an atom and then a list of atoms after it, the list are the ones on the outside. So CL, 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 and CL. So there's my skeleton. That's the second part I do. Now I draw in the bonds. 2, 4, 6, 8. After you get the bonds, so that's 8 of 36, then we draw in the lone pairs. Uh, 10, 12, 14, 16, 18, 20, 22, 24, 26, 28, 30, 32. And now I'm at 32 of 36. All my fluorines have an octet. My iodine has an octet. Where do I put the next lone the pair? Iodine. Yeah, it's going to be in the middle. Iodine can take it because it's bigger than neon. Anything bigger than neon can take those lone pairs. There's 36. Okay, next step. So Lewis is done. Okay? You can put brackets around it. Put a minus charge. We're totally done. Next step, step. How many groups do I have around the center atom? Five. Six. 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 Two lone pairs and four bonds. Six groups. That means its electronic shape will equal octahedral. And its uh, molecular geometry. Yeah, what would you say? Square planar. When there's two lone pairs, they're going to go opposite of each other on the octahedral sites. And so the four left will be in a square and it will be planar. And we call that? Conveniently, square plane. Okay, there's Vesper. That's done. In fact, so what I would do next is draw it um, in three-dimensionally, but in fact, I've already done it. It's square planar as I've drawn it, so I'm done. Otherwise, at this point, I would redraw it three-dimensionally. If we get a different example that's applicable, you'll see me do that. But you use what I showed you in class that showed you how to draw linear, how to draw trigonal planar, how to draw tetrahedral, etc. You just make sure you draw it appropriately. For, mm -hmm. for that one, if you had to draw the, uh, what's it called, uh, when you like, I don't remember the word, but like when you have like something with like two bonds on one side and one side, one bond on the other side, and then you have to draw the other one where it's like the one bond is on that side. Like when you... Uh -huh. Wait, wait. <laughs> uh -huh. It sounds like a good question, but I don't know what it is. I don't remember the word for it, but um, well, I'll just come back. Just keep okay, going. Okay, show just me a going. picture later. Next is polarity. So you want to determine if it's polar. There's a couple ways to do that. One is you just look at it and see if it's symmetric. What do you all think? Does it look symmetric? Yes. Pretty symmetric. Yeah. Uh, so you would say. From that, you would say, oh, this is nonpolar. The other way you could do it is to look at it and say, are there lone pairs on the center? You go through your three rules. So if you don't have them memorized, I mean, you don't have to if you're good with symmetry. Otherwise, the first rule says, if you have lone pairs on the center atom, you would initially think it's polar. However, the second rule says, if it's, pla if it's square planar or linear, it's going to be nonpolar. And each rule trumps the previous one. And so, yeah, this is definitely going to be nonpolar from rule of thumb, general rule number two. It says square planar uh, is nonpolar. Okay. Any questions on this one? We could do another one if you want to. Yeah. Um, so, to figure out polarity, we don't necessarily need to draw like, three, the three dimensional. We can just leave it as a little diagram. Uh, I would. Okay, figure out polarity. It's true, you don't have to draw it, but somehow you have to visualize it. If you don't draw it on paper, you do have to draw it in your mind. Because you could, if you're doing symmetry, you could get messed up by that. But if you're doing your general rules and you're like, it's square planar, and it fits all three rules okay, 
and you figure out, yeah, that's okay, unless we ask you to draw it. But there'll probably be some that you don't have to draw, we just want the answer, and some that you will have to draw. Yeah. Okay, sorry. Uh -huh. um, the resonance structure. The if, resonance, yes. If you, with that one, would you just switch the lone pairs? So like, like, could you, is there a resonance structure where you just like switch the corners of the... Uh, there could be, I can't think of one, because right now all the formal charges are zero. Okay. So here, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven should be in column seven. Mm -hmm. And one, two, three, four, five, six, oh wait, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. I guess I shouldn't say zero, but minus one there. Okay. Which Flip. is okay. If you, do you have another idea? No, I was just wondering if there were any. Well, because if, if you do this, you get a formal charge here. And then you mess up the formal charge here, where so you get a plus one formal charge here, and then you'll get uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Right. Shoot, <laughs> you know, like a plus, a minus two formal charge there. Okay. So that doesn't fix anything. I can't think of one that fixes it. Usually, what happens when you get around to octahedral, most everything's going to be single bonds in octahedral, and even in. Uh, Trigonal bipyramidal, most commonly things are going to be in single bonds. You still want to look for resonance structures, but you're not often going to find so it. So you, okay, so you just know to look for, like, if you have a resonance structure, if it's, like, below. I mean, I'd always look for resonance right. structure. I just know I'm, I know from doing enough examples, I'm rarely going to find it for octahedral or uh, trigonal bipyramidal. Oh, okay. yeah. Oh, first. <clears throat> um, Next. Can you also do, how would you know which angles to like draw and stuff? I mean, do you, like... Oh yeah, I didn't do the bond angles, by the way. What's the octahedral bond, bond angle since you just reminded me? 90. 90, yeah. You'll definitely be asked stuff like that too. Okay, and was that kind of what you were asking or something different? Yeah, and then can we do another example? We'll do another one for sure. Yeah, well, we have plenty of time, like an hour and a half. How about you? Uh, how, do, like, how do you go about checking whether there's a resonance structure? Like, what? How do, you, how, do you, how do you, like, know? How do you know if there's a resin structure? Uh, if you draw it and something's messed up, like there's, you can't fix the, uh, if you can't fix the octet rule or the formal charges are bad, there's a good chance that there's a resonance structure. Okay? Another hint, if there's a lot of oxygens, there very often will be a resonance structure. Um, if there's a lot of lone pairs sitting around, it's quite possible it can be. In just this case, what you could try, like she said, you know, you move your lone pairs around and try to make a bond. Uh, but if it gets, if it starts getting worse whenever you move stuff around, I'd say pretty much there's uh, not going to be a resonance structure. Yeah, you have a thought? Um, I recall in class today that you did uh, xenon, fluorine 2, chlorine 2. Uh -huh. And it had a resonance structure that was polar, and it had a resonance structure that was non-polar. Oh, okay. Does that thing behave both ways somehow? Yeah, we did. So xenon, F2, Cl2. That's not a resonance structure. That's what's called an isomer, uh, which you'll learn a little bit more about in 2C uh, when you get there. Uh, but yeah, resonance structures only, if not spatially, things are the same, but electrons only move. That's a resonance structure. When you move atoms around, uh, that's what's called an isomer. And isomers have physical properties change. But for resonance structures, the physical properties are the same. And in fact, the chemical properties are the same too. So that's say if there were like one, one double bond, then like a resonance structure would be like another like position of like a yes. double bond. That was a great comment actually. If there's a double bond or a triple bond, it is very likely that there's a resonance structure. So if there's a double bond, triple bond, or if there's oxygens, there's very likely to be a resonance structure. Not always, but likely. Are the resonance structures only when you, when you like move the bonds around? It doesn't matter yes. about the lone pairs? The lone pairs and bonds will move. And because, that's a resonance structure. Because can't you move like the lone pairs around in that one? Like, not, or not, or do you mean only on the outside, not the inside? It doesn't matter. Oh. What do you want to move? Like, I mean, putting this here. That doesn't do anything, right? That's the same thing. Okay. When you put this here, it doesn't matter because uh, three-dimensionally, one of these is coming out of the board, okay. and the other one's going in.
to okay. the octahedral electronic structure. So it doesn't matter where I put them. I just put them opposite to remember one's going in, one's going out. Okay. But the, the three-dimensionality of the lone pairs is not drawn in. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Um, can a, bipyram a trigonal bipyramidal ever form a trigonal pyramidal? No. Uh, because the trigonal part of it uh, is the trigonal planar part. And the only way you can get a trigonal pyramidal is from a tetrahedral. <laughs> So there'd actually have to be a shape change, and that would be a different molecule.